divide, add or subtract, figure what the answer will be. You can do it with a little help from your friends here on TV. Math homework helpers, it's time, time for math homework helpers, oh yeah. This is a show where we get to help you with your math homework and give you prizes just for calling in. With us today, we have the cool Mr. Gosnell from Chesapeake High and the fantastic Mr. Donovan from Hillcrest Elementary School. Hey, Ollie and Polly, how are you guys doing today? Oh, we're yeah, doing we're good. 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 We're doing fantastic, Mr. Donovan. In fact, Ollie was just telling me about his snail friend who's getting his first car today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. A snail buying a car? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, it's the best. I'm so excited for my snail, buddy. Hey, hang on, Ollie. Mm -hmm. You need to explain this one. Oh, sure. So, my snail friend, his name is Snail. <laughs> By the way, he asked the car salesman for the fastest car. The salesman showed him the car, and the snail said he would buy it. But only after the salesman covered the car with the letter S. Wait a second, mm -hmm. he said cover the car with the letter S? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The snail said he wanted the letter S on the hood, the doors, the wheels, everywhere. Ollie, why did the snail want the letter S all over the car? Oh, so when the snail drove by, get this, everyone would say, look at that S car go. Oh. Ah, you get S car go, snail. S -car -go. I Do you guys it, understand that? It sounds delicious. <laughs> okay. It was, it was quality. I'll it was it worth that. the wait, right? <laughs> you are too much. Thanks. All right, let's go ahead and start the show. Don't forget, boys and girls, that every caller who calls in gets a prize from our Puck to Pick a Prize Wall. Mr. Donovan, what are the prizes for today? Well, today we have earbuds. We have a hot cold pack. We have a USB flash drive. And we also have a flashlight today. Oh, nice. I can see that it works there. Sounds great. So let's go ahead and get the show started and go to the phones. The number to call is 410-494-1459. Polly, who is our first caller of the day? Our first caller of the day is Iman from Norwood Elementary School. Hi, Iman. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We are well. Thank you very much. Hey, we miss you. You joined us last week. That was awesome. Yeah. Do you have a question, Amon? Yes. All right, what can we help you with? Xavier has 10 golf balls. Iman has 10 more golf balls than Xavier. Dylan has two more golf balls than both. Xavier and Iman have together. How many golf balls does Iman have? How many golf balls does Dylan have? Okay, so you have you have three people, right? That's yeah. a lot of golf balls, guys. I keep track of this, of okay? Balls. I know. I'm trying Write to keep track down. of all these details. Hey, if you need a driver, I have a snail friend. <laughs> ah! You guys S get it? Cargo. I don't know. He might be. He might not be very fast. Okay, though, golf, so. that's a golf joke. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I get it now. Mm -hmm. Driver. All right, let's see. I want to see if I have all these details right. You said Xavier has ten golf balls, Iman has ten more, and Dylan has ten more than both. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. And the question Dylan has two more than both. Two more. Two more. Okay, two perfect. Two more. Two more. Good. Good. Poor Dylan. That makes a big it's good difference. Good that we clarified that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Dylan has more. Oh, oh yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, good job, That's Dylan. Good. Yeah. See, <laughs> and Aman, what is the question asking you? What? What is the question asking you? Maybe like asking how many golf balls. It's two questions actually. Actually. Mm -hmm. This question is, how many golf balls does Elon have? Okay, okay, let's start with that one then. So we have Xavier with 10 golf balls. Now, I like to draw pictures for these, so I'm going to draw I 10 different pictures. golf balls. Four, five, oh my six, gosh, seven, eight, look at that. nine, ten. Whoa, they almost look like dimples look on like, a golf ball. Uh, That's crazy. Hello, oh, they do, they do. Am I the it's only one loving drawing. the blackboard? That's cool. Well, yeah, that does look cool. Yeah, you look, that looks pop. awesome. Boom. And purple, hello. I love purple. <laughs> we love purple. Mm -hmm. Purple and pink, just like the puppet friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So we have Amon here with 10 more golf balls than Xavier. So I want to take Xavier's total. I'm just going to introduce 10 more golf balls, just 10 more for Amon. 1, 2, 3, three 4, four five, 5, 6, six seven, 8, eight 9, nine 10. 10. Yay! And there they all are. So I can just go ahead and count those up. And it looks like Amon has a total of 10 to match Xavier and 10 more to make 20 total. You can skip yeah. count 10. Whoop. Whoop. What's that? That is a good strategy, skip counting. You could definitely skip, skip count and go 10 plus 10 is... Oh my goodness, 20. I have a hard time skipping and counting at the same time, to you be honest. Skip, you to be totally honest. 10, I can gallop and count. 20. So 20. <laughs> and what was the second question you had, Amon? How many golf balls does Dylan have? Now, I want to ask a clarifying question. It says Dylan has two more than both. Does that mean two more than, than each person or two more than the total? What do you take this it question is asking? Dylan has both Xavier and Iman. Uh -huh. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I can take the total that already was calculated here, the 20, and just add two more golf balls. I know that that's 20. Plus two. There's Dylan's two golf balls. Oh, man. So it looks like Dylan has a total of 22 golf balls. 22. Yeah. 22 total golf balls. Yeah. Looks good. Is that one of your answers, Aman? Is it multiple choice? So it's not one of our answers. We just have to write it down. Uh oh. Okay, Perfect. Nice, nice. So I think uh, your teacher is going to give you full credit with 22 total golf balls. Hopefully. Hopefully. Does that help you out? Yes. All right. Hey, you know what it's time for? Of course I do. Of I'm course you do. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Jeez, Pump, the pick a prize wall. Ready? Uh -huh. Go over to the prize wall and see what happens. Let's go. Come on, hot cold pack. There Co it goes. Oh, oh flashlight. Right. You on the flashlight. I love flashlight. Good job, Iman. Awesome. Thanks for calling. Bye, Great Bye, job. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Wow, she got a flashlight. That's awesome. Who's our next hey, caller? I'm jealous. Polly yeah, totally and Ollie. Do we have somebody else on the yeah, phone? We do. We have Ava and Amia. Franklin Elementary School. Oh, yeah. They're fifth graders. Hello. Amaya. Ava and Amaya. Hello. Is that what you said? Amaya? Amia? Amaya? Is, it, is it Amaya? It's, it's Maya. Maya. Got it. Ava and Maya. Okay, great. Maya. What's your question? The two callers. Awesome. Double caller. What's your, what's your question? So, um, what is 12.8% of three... 312.5. Wow. 312.5. Wow. We are this so is, past golf balls. This is a serious question. Yeah, seriously. No more golf balls. Grade five here? Yeah, what, gra what grade are you two I, in, huh? I know we're taking middle school fifth, questions. We're in the fifth grade advanced math class. Oh, oh okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay, well, you guys are awesome. I hope in your, your teachers uh, are up to this. fifth grade math class, what sort of thing have you guys been, ha have you been solving questions like this? A percentage question of 312.5. We've, we've, we've been moving the decimal point to the left uh, two times. Uh, of, of 12 and 8 tenths? Yeah. OK, to the left? OK. We can move it 1, 2. What toe? And this becomes 128? Left? Yeah. OK, and then what are we going to do with that 128? Well. Actually, we have to put a decimal point right in front of the 128. Okay, so now we have 0 and 128. Okay. And yeah. And then what? And then we have to multiply that by 312.5. Okay. So wow. does that sound right to you, Mr. Gosnell? Hmm. Changing that percent into a decimal and then multiplying it with 312.5? That does sound right. With okay. what we do in high school, it's exactly what we need to do. All right, yeah, perfect. Yeah, this is secretly a high school question. This, Absolutely. This you sounds, guys are sounds so like a high school smart. question. I teach fifth grade, and this is, I'm not too familiar with this just we yet. Like okay, I teach so, tenth grade, and it might even stump my students. So now yeah. we need to <laughs> multiply them both together? Yeah. Okay, great. So can I just stack these right here? Uh, zero and 128,000. Uh -oh. uh, and multiply that by 312.5. Can I do that? Yeah. OK, when I multiply these together, how should I think about it? What can I get rid of? Uh, you can get rid of the zero. Yeah, we can get rid of the zero there. We can also, I'm gonna just going to get rid of these 
decimal points, and then maybe we can pop those in at the end. Does that sound all right? Sounds yeah. good. All right, great. Uh, so can you help me multiply? Yeah. Great. What's 5 times 8? 40. 40. 40. I'm going to regroup here. Uh, and then 8 times 2 plus 4? 20. 20. Regroup again. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 2 more. That gives me 10. And then 8 times 3 plus 1. How much do you have? 25. 25. Nice, awesome. Nice. Boy, they so are now sharp. now we are done with that 8, and we can move on to the 2 in the tens place value. What's, uh, when we move over here to the tens place value, what do we need to do? Uh, Add to a 0. Right, we're going to annex a 0 to Excellent. hold the place. And then what can we do now? Um, we have to do 2 times 5. And that gives us 10. 10. And then 2 times 2 plus 1? 5. Awesome. And then 2 times 1. What's 2 times 1? 2. And 2 times 3? 6. 6. Man, Perfect. she is on a roll. She wow. is on a roll. We're flying through uh -huh. this one. Is this Ava or Maya? Who is this? Ava. Uh, Ava, you're a rock star. Ava, great job. Okay, uh, and then now we're done with the 8, we're done with the 2, and now we're in the 1 in the hundreds place. What do we need to do in our, in our answer here? Annex two zeros. Annex Ooh. two zeros. She even zeros. used the word annex. annex. Jeez. And this is an easy one because we're just multiplying everything by 1, and 5 times 1, that gives us 5. 1 times 2 gives us 2. 1 times 1 gives us 1, and 3 times 1 gives us 3. Look so how now, colorful that is. That's so colorful. We can add them up. Very nice. Even Maya, I'm going to add up these first two columns because they're easy. Can you add up uh, the next one? Um, that would be 10. 10, and now we have 5 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 more gives us another what? 10. Awesome. Regroup. 6 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 gives us? 10. Another 10. Holy smokes. And 3 plus 1 gives us 4. Now... This is a huge answer, 400,000. Is this, is this our right answer? Wow. Yeah. Boy, that ended perfectly, it didn't it? Wow. Look hmm. at that. It's all I zeros. Think, I think I'm, we forgot something. What did we forget? Decimal places. What, what's that? The decimal places. Right. We forgot to put our decimal places back into uh, our question and then put them into our answer, right? So mm -hmm. I think we had one here and we had one here. So if we have three decimal places in the question, wait, three, oh, not three, one, two, three, four decimal four. places in the question, what, uh, where should our decimal place go in our answer? Um, right, right after the, well, right before really the fourth zero. The fourth, okay, so we're going we're gonna to add up these four place values. We're going to one, two, three, four, and we're going to put our answer there. Is that right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. So what's our what's our final answer? 40%. 40, well, or 12.8% of 312.5 is going to be 40, 40%. right? Awesome. Wow. That was yeah. a serious math question. You know, I'm glad that, that you were good. able to remember to put those decimal places in. Um, in high school, it's really important for us to keep track of where we are in our problem and kind of think if it makes sense. So when we're looking at this problem and it's asking you to find a piece of 312.5, we definitely expect our answer to be smaller than 312.5 because that's our whole answer. That's what we started with. If we're cutting that smaller, then it makes sense that 400,000 wasn't really our final answer. We would need to do one extra step. So good catch on that. Definitely. And, and, and our, in my math class, in my fifth grade math class, we would look at this and we would try and estimate. Oh, and we know nice. that 12.8% uh, is about 10%. And this is, you know, it's kind of close to 300 or maybe 400. We could say 300. And 10% of 300 is going to be about 30. And that's pretty close to our answer. So I think 40 is a suitable answer, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Fantastic job. I'm kind of happy this turned out to be an easy number. Yeah. It helps to know yeah. that we got it correct. <laughs> you know, you what, know what that means? Is? It's time for? Yep, you know it, Ollie. Hello. What time, time is it? What is it? It's the time to drop the puck. Something Whoa. like that. Yes. <laughs> the puck to pick a prize wall. Here it comes. Uh, if I can remove here this old one here. Pack. Okay, let's see what you win. Come on, hot gold pack. Oh, the tension. Earbuds. BCPS TV earbuds. Look at that. Awesome. Wow, hey, Great thanks job. for calling. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank bye. you. Hey, hey, guys. Oh.
Oh, wait, wait, wait wasn't was it? there two people? Oh, drop another one. Oh, there was. Two okay, cars, well, right? we need to drop another oh, one man. then. We should have dropped two at the same time. Ready? That would have been exciting. I'm going to go this side this time. Oh, and I missed. Uh -uh. You really went that side. We really <laughs> dropped it. <laughs> I dropped it for sure. Another yeah. flashlight. And a flashlight. Awesome. Woo. All wow. right. Great. Thanks for calling. Bye -bye. That was great. Hey, you guys want another one? You want another yeah. caller? We need to give away some more prizes. Uh -huh. We have so Let's many here. Let's do it. Maybe this next answer will be as colorful as the last. Ooh, that was pretty good. It was very, uh, Can you do that on your homework, by the way? Is that very allowed? Luminescent. <laughs> All right. Anyway, on the phone now, we have Preet from Norwood Elementary. Hello. Hi, Hi Preet. Hi. 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 Preet's in third grade. You got a math problem? Yeah. All right. Wow. Lay it on us. Um, which equation is an example of community property of multiplication? It's all you, fellas. Okay. And can we I'll have one of the equations? Yeah, Pre what are your choices? Uh, sounds like there's a couple of you there. Is there a, are there a few of you calling in today? Yeah. All right. So do you have a couple of choices um, that we could choose? Which one's an example of the commutative property? Yes. Okay, what's the first one? Nine times five. Nine times five. Nine, Nine times, times five. five. Nine times oh, five. Man, equals. I'm digging the blackboard. Oh, I think it's sharp. Six times one. And is that a different? Five? I think that's choice B. That might be. Oh, that's a good so I see. Let's see. I, if not, let's go ahead and put one up there yeah, that can I demonstrate. Let's try number four in the worksheet. Yeah, let's try it. Up, six buddy. times in the worksheet. Let's do it. Number four on the worksheet. Equals. Okay. Six times one equals two plus four times one. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And we're trying to figure out if this is the commutative property? Yeah. Could you describe to me the commutative property? What you know about it? It, it, it equals the same number. Is that always true? I think there's a lot of different properties that would help us to equal numbers together. What makes the commutative property, let's say, different than the associative property? It, it's the same number equal. OK, OK. I think there's one more part of it that makes it special for the commutative property. I like to think about it if the if both sides of the equation or the problem are talking to each other, like communicating, right? So. It doesn't matter how the numbers are set up as long as they communicate the same answer. Is that kind of what you're saying, Preep? Yeah. OK, cool. So as long as the numbers in a multiplication problem are set up, oh, I'm sorry, uh, even if they're set up in a different way, they still communicate or they still give us the, the, uh, the same answer. Is that wait, right? Wait, wait, wait. When the numbers yeah, communicate, yeah. do they text each other? Uh, <laughs> or do they, what do they do? I think How do they, they communicate? They talk? The like text? Like we do? Polly, I, I think text? they call each other on the like house the phone. Sorry. So choice A that looks like we have property. six times um, one. Multiplication states that, that two numbers can be multiplied in either order. Oh, there's your perfect. Absolutely. Great. There's your correct definition. Great job. OK, so I'm going to list out all the answer choices, because only one of them will be correct here. I do see some other properties that you will use, but only one of them is going to be the commutative property. So maybe we can figure out what's different between this one and the rest of them, and we can kind of see what it's going to look like for the future. So if I recall correctly, you had just told me that numbers can be multiplied in different orders, and we can still get the same number. Yeah. So I'm looking at these, hmm. Now, I, I think 4 plus 2 is still 6, but we need them to be the same number already before we classify this as the commutative property. So I'm not liking that answer too much. Even though they are equal, it's really not answering the question. Right, it doesn't have the same numbers, right? They're, even yeah. though it gets you the same answer, the numbers aren't in a different order. They're just different numbers. Right, okay. right. So I'm going to strike through that one. I'm not a fan. Oh man, I like that one. For B, 9 times 0 equals 0. Well, I agree with that, but it's not going to be the commutative <laughs> property. We could kind of change that to be the commutative property. Maybe if we have time, we'll go back to that. So I'm not a fan of B either. C, well, 
C looks a lot like another problem that we, we just crossed off. It looks like A. So that one is not going to work if we kind of pay attention to the pattern of the problems. So that leaves D, and let's talk about why D is our correct answer. These numbers need to get a better cell plan. I mean, really, one <laughs> out of four, that's not great. So it looks like we have the four times three, which is where we start. And as long as we're multiplying by the same numbers in a different order, we will be good. So four times three equals three times four. If we switch that order, we have the same thing, and that is going to be our answer. Four times three equals three times four. Absolutely. Right. And both of them equal 12, so that works. 12 equals 12. So if we were to take a look at B again, and we were to change one thing, let's go ahead and make that change in blue. If I made this problem uh, 9 times 0 equals 0 times 9, so it was the same numbers on both sides, oh. that would work now. This would be a possible second answer choice if it was written that way, because we're switching those numbers there. Confusing. <laughs> it is, it is. Sorry, now there are two answers? What's going on? Nine times zero equals zero times Yeah, if we go back and just look there at what was on that worksheet, we've got there we go. this here, and we're going to go with D. D thank is you so much answer. for your call. Great job, Creep. Does that help? Yes. All right. All right. Good That's job. what it's time awesome. for. Awesome. What should we do Sorry, now? Should we get a new caller? Wait. I don't think no, so quite yet. Let's go to the prize wall. Ah, the puck to pick a prize wall. Here it goes. Oh, my gosh. You can't see there it, but you want a hot oh, cold pack. Oh, man, there it is. I've been awesome. waiting. Awesome. That's all your. It is freezing out there. I could use a hot pack. Hot pack. Oh, 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 okay. Ooh, fancy. All that right. was a nice animation. Oh, all that right. That's a good job, guys. OK, Ooh. here we go. It's still in. Oh, look at him sweat. You guys need a high five when you do that. All right. Like a wrestling match. All right. It's great. We'll high five Dylan next time. from Hillcrest <laughs> Elementary School. <laughs> oh, Hill wait a second. Hillcrest, I've been there. Wait a minute. Who? Hillcrest. Dylan, Where's can you hear us? Hello? Hey, Dylan, how you Hi, doing? Dylan. Hello. Good. I have a question on number five. Number okay, five. what number does five. number five say, Dylan? Okay, it's from, it's 70 times 9 tenths. 70 times 9 tenths. Awesome. Uh, and this is Dylan from my class, right? Or from my, my ELA class, right, Dylan? Yeah. And this is Dylan from Miss Dillingham's math class. So, uh, Dylan... What have you been doing in Miss Dillingham's class to okay. solve this so problem? This is what she told us to do. Below the 70, put a 1. Right. We can put a 1 underneath of the 70 to show that whole number as a fraction, right? 70 okay. over 1 is the same as 70 holes. And we can now multiply this by 9 tenths. Dylan, how can we solve 70 over 1 times 9 over 10? Okay. So you first start with the denominator, and okay. 10 times 1 is 10. It sure is. 10 times 1 equals 10. Yep. Then what? 90, I mean 9 times 70 equals 630. Whoa, that's impressive, right? You found your basic fact. 9 times 7 okay. gives you 63, and then you annex 1, 0, and gets you 630. Awesome. Yep. Dylan, is, would this be an acceptable answer in Ms. Dillingham's class? No, because it will be an improper fraction. Yeah, this is mm. a seriously mm. huge improper fraction. How can we change this to a proper fraction? So what I did was I multiplied 10 by 60, and then I got 600. Awesome. So you're, uh, that sounds fantastic. So you know that if you multiply 10 times 60, that's going to get you 600. So if we did our repeated subtraction, we could do 630 minus 600 leaves us 30. So we have 60 so far. And then how can we get uh, 30 more from 10? What are we going to multiply 10 by this time? OK, we're going to multiply 10 by 3. By 3, and that's going to give us 30, right? Good job. So now we can take this 60. And this 3 that we multiplied, and what can we do with these two numbers, Dylan? Divide them, maybe? Uh, we're not going to divide them. We can actually add these together. And 60 oh, plus 63, yeah. that's going to get us 63, 63. right? Perfect. Yeah. Another way we could do this, Dylan, and maybe you could um, tell Ms. Dillingham and, and the rest of your class. So if you have this fraction, I'll put it over here again, 630 
over 10. What you can do, since you have zeros in both of the ones places, Ooh. you can just cancel them out by dividing them Fancy. both by 10. So if we did, uh, if we divided both by 10, uh -huh. this would be 63 over 1. And based on our question earlier, if 70 over 1 equals 70, 63 over 1 equals how much, Dylan? How much, Dylan? Uh, 7 over 1. Well, what's our answer, right? You still just told oh, our yeah, answer. 63. Yeah, it equals 63. So we could just kind of simplify 630 over 10 just by uh, getting rid of those zeros by dividing each of them by 10. Good job. So and that's a very good that trick. Another taught us is to cross simplify. Oh, the cross simplify. You could do that mm. also. Man, that's impressive. Uh, Miss Dillingham is teaching some really cool things. So if I rewrite this problem as 70 over 1 times 9 over 10, we could cross multiply, right? We could do the same yeah. thing to 7 and 10. We could just cross out those zeros by dividing them each by 10. And now we have 7 times 9 is 63, and 1 times 1 is 1. Boom! Wow, wow that's three awesome, three man. To your answer. That was really good. Nice, nice. job, Dylan. Uh, hey, Mr. Donovan, just so you know, on your back, you might have some snow. Some snow uh, there is back. a cloud that just showed up a couple minutes ago. I meant to tell you, but I didn't oh. want to interrupt oh, you. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, so uh, just dust it oh, off. Okay. Oh, cool. you know? Where's know. your cap? Yep. Just mm -hmm. looking out for my homies. Uh, I, think, I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is You're cold outside. I didn't know it was snowing. Yeah. hope it's not uh, coming it's snowing. You know, like dandruff oh, or something. Remind me of the you know what that's called? Indoor participation. Pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty trippy here. Uh, you mean <laughs> okay, Dylan. Uh, see you tomorrow, and I'll bring you this prize that you're about to win tomorrow. Let's see what you got. Let's drop oh, that. Oh man! I Come haven't on, gone right in the middle yet. Let's I gotta go. be careful not to actually drop it this time. Ear that was dramatic. Though. The puck to pick a prize while flashlight. Wow! Yeah. Right to the flashlight. Flashlight. Awesome. All right, Dylan. Thanks for it. calling. Flash Great job. Light. Hey, is this where we cue the Parliament song? Do you guys know Funkadelic? Hey. Oh, the Parliament. Funky George Trump. Clinton? Flashlight, flashlight. Pen, oh, and a high five. Well, bam! Oh, oh, look five. at that. Okay, they took guys, my director's Guess what? We have a new caller. We do. It's Michaela from Essex Elementary, my favorite school. <laughs> She's in fourth grade. Michaela, let's hear your math problem. Hello. Hi. Hi. I have a question that's uh, called an argument. Oh, I'm okay. good at those. Oh, oh I love to argue. Wait, no, is you're this, not. Is this no, math you're not. class or no, is this? Uh, no, you're not. Are you, uh, are you uh, taking the bar exam? Are you going to be a lawyer <laughs> constructing arguments? <laughs> no. Mom liked that one. Look, she's already Check. arguing. We she got a said fan. No. Nice. We she said good. no. That's good. You said no. It's a good argument. Nope. No, Ollie. The, I'll be quiet. The question says a human usually has 20 baby teeth. Which are replaced by 32 adult teeth. Raw lost eight of his baby teeth. Raw said he lost four tenths of his baby teeth. Anna said Raw lost two fifths of his baby teeth. Which of these conjectures are Ooh. true? Construct an argument to justify your answer. Well, that's a tough one. I don't have any teeth. Look, do you have teeth, Ollie? <laughs> Michaela, are you in fourth grade or your four, fourth year of grad school? Yeah, or that's something? the bar exam, guys. <laughs> this is the bar exam. This, is this the bar? This, this is, is the bar, bar exam. exam. I'm feeling the pressure here. I'm glad that it was snowing up in the corner because yeah. I'd be sweating right now. I'm glad I didn't get this question. Yeah, I'm like. Hmm. You can do it, guys. You can do it. So notice first, Michaela, as you were reading, I was kind of trying to grab out that important pieces of information: 20, 32, 8, 4 tenths, and 2 fifths, because I know that somewhere along the line, I'm going to use those numbers. Um, you said somebody had 20 baby teeth. What were their names? They're, the one person's called Raw. The main person is Raul. Yeah, the main person's Raul. Raul. Okay. Okay. Raul. I just like the details. They really help me kind of like, you know, paint a picture in my yeah, head of what's happening. Picture it, right. Yeah. Painting, you I need like to see Raul's paint. teeth. Uh -huh. I do. It would hey. help if I had a picture. To That's be not weird of at Raul. all. Yeah. Totally not weird. Send his dental records in for me, please. Uh -huh. How about the 32 teeth? You said that. When you grow up, you lose your baby teeth and get 32 adult teeth? What? Yes. Polly, you still waiting on yours? I, I, What's I, going I on? I don't see mine. Where's my teeth? Where? Ah, ah, ah. And then when you get really old, you 
have no teeth, right? <laughs> I'm old. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm Make sure you brush, Show us. Michaela. Show us. Okay. Okay, and before I start going down the wrong path here, I have to ask, can you go through the problem one more time for me? Too late. One more time. Uh, yeah. Okay, they have Raul lost eight of his teeth. Raul lost eight of his baby teeth. Raul said he lost four tenths of his baby teeth. Anna said Ra Raul lost two fifths of his baby teeth. Which of these conjectures are true? Contra construct an argument to justify your answer. Okay, okay. So, so is hmm. it four tenths or two fifths? If Raul lost eight of his teeth, I wonder what value that would get. He must be playing ice hockey. So we'll go, I'll split it up into three different cases. We'll do A, B, and C. Why not? Cases Sounds like good. law school, right? I, I mean, figured I would make it C? anywhere in the courtroom. Pretty logical, right? I mean, there's this big word down here I haven't even touched on, conjecture. I mean, who's the, yeah. who's the judge, Ollie or Polly? Oh, I passed oh. the bar exam. Oh, nice. I totally What's... passed it. You know what I said at the end? I said, case closed. <laughs> good job, Ollie. Good job. Yeah. Good, good Ollie. Then yeah. they said you can case, leave now. Yeah, please, they said, now. please case leave. One. Case closed. We have two, actually. <laughs> two and three. Actually, right? I was walked out after that. But that's fine. Uh-oh. How's it going over there on that board? Scoot that over. You know what, Ollie no and Polly, you guys yeah. are in contempt of court, all right? What? We need to focus on this problem Absolutely. for Michaela. We really need to dial in. Oh, wait, I love one other thing. She's going to be. Ollie's talking too much <laughs> today. You're going to be both found in content and spend Chicken. the night in if the. If you say objection fast, it's not a Never mind, I'll stop. Check it. Check it. All right, so I personally am always drawing pictures, so if it helps you at all, draw your 20 teeth and then subtract 8 by crossing them out. Now, I'm not going to take up all of your time here. So 20 minus 8, we can kind of just think about. And if I count that right, 19, 18, 17, okay? You just I get got 12. it on your fingers. That was rad. So I don't see those as one of my answers. So if I were to say that I have eight teeth left, I don't know if that would be correct. But in terms of losing eight teeth, it looks like that was, that was true. No, they said, did he lose four tenths or two fifths? So, yeah, so I think, Michaela, yeah, you were saying, right, that Raul lost eight teeth, and one person said that was four tenths of his 20 teeth, and the other person said it was two fifths of his 20 teeth. Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. See, so let's take a look at, you know what? I could have written that eight there in orange to make it look a little, a little bit better, but that's okay. Let's see what happens when those 20 teeth that we start off with now get multiplied by this four tenths, and we'll see if that communicates the same number. And I really like this problem because, Mr. Donovan, you went over some really good strategies on how to evaluate these fractions. In fact, I remember that you can take any number and divide it by one and not change its value. That's going to be pretty useful here. In fact, I actually see another strategy that I want to take from what you just went over. Um, let's go ahead and do that cross uh, simplification there. Let's take that 0 from 20 and the 0 from 10 and cross them off diagonally. How can we do that? How can like we just that. cross Oops. them off? Oh, you annex the zeros. Oh, perfect. OK. Nice. Cool. And if you guys saw that, I put a little dot there. Uh, sometimes you represent multiplication with a single dot. But let me go ahead and get back into the groove here with an x for multiplication. So if I multiply these across here, 2 times 4, it's not 20 anymore, it's 2. 2 times 4 equals 8 divided by 1 times 1. That's going to be pretty easy. That's just a 1. And now kind of using that same strategy, if I can divide 20 by 1 and not change its value, then 8 divided by 1 is not changing the original number's value. This is just going to be 8. So if I were to say Raul lost 8 teeth or Raul lost 4 tenths of his teeth, it looks like I still end up with the right communication. So we got one more to look at. Maybe he was eating crunchy food. I mean, what's going on here? What's Raul's, I mean, is he a hockey player? I'm so confused. <laughs> He's just, he's just growing up. He's growing up, yeah. That's you know what? I, was I wouldn't say he lost two fifths. I'd say he lost too many. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what I noticed, too Michaela? Many. I look at these four tenths and the two fifths. I see those two fractions, and those kind of look similar to me. What do you? What? What could we do to see if uh, four tenths and two fifths are the same fraction? Because that might save <laughs> us a step if uh, if we could see if if four tenths is equal or not equal to two fifths. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you've been doing in your number classroom? Line? What's that? Huh? You can probably do a number line. You could do a number line. That's what I was okay. going to say. Line. Okay. If I had thought of that, I totally would have said you it. You know what I like to do? Line. Or at least, Michaela, when you, when you go into fifth grade, 
uh, you'll see if you take 2 fifths, you could multiply it by a fraction that's equal to 1. So we could take our 2 fifths and we can multiply it by 2 over 2. And 2 over 2 is kind of like 1 over 1, and this is a fraction that just Ooh. equals one whole, right? Whoa! That's pretty cool. I see you drew a big one around it. That a big one. That is like 3D, Mr. Tonic. It's That's not like the 3D. best one. It kind of looks like a bird, too. Or an owl. But 2 times 2, that gives us 4, and 5 times 2 gives us 10. So that means that these two fractions are equal, right? Well, I don't know. That looks like conjecture, to be honest. <laughs> Should I don't we? know. If, if we already did all the work for four tenths, I think that this kind of yeah. proves then the we're fact good, that this right? works. Awesome. Why do the work, awesome. I think, I think do the work again, awesome. right? So yeah. just didn't agree. We have to argue now. Let's make an argument. Do no, it. let's not. Yes, let's. Nope, I'm no. ready to argue. Yes. I want to argue. No. Yes. I argue no. that huh? I claim, I state that eight in this case, saying that he lost eight teeth, and saying that he lost four tenths of his teeth, and also saying that he lost the two fifths. Whoops, there we go. They're all equivalent. That's what I yeah. state. That doesn't sound like a good argument. You didn't say no. You didn't or say yes. never. <laughs> it was a polite sure argument. I wanted to be polite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> no. Well, you we, yes. well, you know, we, we, he stated a conjecture, not an argument. Oh. So, uh, Why didn't you say so? an argument you, it would be bickering like you two knuckleheads are doing back there. <laughs> no, but it's we, not us mathematicians, no, no, up here. Hey, I'm Magician. We're stating conjectures. I, wait, it does look what? like magic sometimes. I will give you that. I'm so confused. I will give you that. Hey, Should guess I... what? Huh? I know what time it is. No, you don't. Yeah, huh? No, you don't. Uh -huh. no, oh, we're not uh -huh. arguing anymore. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's time to drop the puck so, it's, to it's pick hard a to prize. Puck to pick a prize wall. Ready, Michaela? Let's do it. Uh, let's go here. Oh, earbuds. Ear hey, nice, nice. Awesome. awesome. Now those, those grow into like flowers or something, Oh, right? Michaela, you're welcome. Thanks for saying thank Bye, you. That's Michaela. very kind. Thank very you kind. for calling. See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Man, you Bye. guys are on a roll. Wait, Who's is next? This where the high five All right, happens? we're going we're to mix it up. Ready? Here we go. Come around for the no. Oh, man. Oh, oh, we got to work on that. We're going to hit. We're going to nail that I one. I was, I was afraid that I was going to be too enthusiastic, yeah, yeah. honestly. Well, I didn't want to hurt you. You know, know, I enjoy enthusiasm. We say be gentle. Who's next, Ollie and Polly? Okay. Polly, you got this? I got it. I got it. It's in my... Hey, Polly. You got this? I... Yes. Go for it. Okay. It's in my... Hey, Polly. Make sure you do... just oh go for it. Oh, my gosh. Ollie, shushy. Sorry. Shh. Shh. It's in mine from <laughs> Norwood. Hi, Amon. Hello. Hi. How you doing, Amon? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Another very polite caller. I'm doing well. What's your question? Well, my question is, which shows the quotient for 18 divided by 3? A, 2, B, 6, B, 8, D, 9. Okay. You, you said the there. quotient Eight, four, for two, 18 three, divided by 3, and you said your answers are 2 for A. And how much was B? B was 9. B was 9. What about C? D was eight. Eight, and what about D as in dog? Uh, what? What wow. was your last ch choice answer? D. Nine. Oh, oh, D was nine. Then what was B as in boy? B was six. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, Amon, so what does the word quotient mean if that's what we're trying to figure out? A quotient means an answer. <laughs> An answer to what type of problem mm. specifically? A division problem. Right. We need to answer. We're, this is just a fancy way of asking what's the answer to a division problem. Uh, yeah. Let's draw a picture. I'm going to draw. I love it. 18. Do a snow cloud. It um, seems to have cleared that's up. That's going to take us forever. <laughs> I'm going to draw 18 stars. One, two, three. Oh, man. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do groups of three. Since oh. that's what we're dividing by, and I'm going to see how many groups will get us to 18. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Four, six. Seven, seven eight, 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 nine. It's a good thing you have all that space for the stars. 11. Oh, oh 12, 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 
18, 19, 20, 20. Oh, oh, wait a second. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm losing. Too many stars. He spaced too out. many stars. You're just too bright. Uh, it was my future. Uh -huh. It's too bright. Oh, man. Hey, where are your okay, Aman. We have how many groups of three? 18. Well, we have 18 stars total, but we put them into groups of three. You know what? I'm going to go the opposite way. We put it into three groups, right? One group, two groups, three groups. How Ooh, those, many those like lightsabers. is in each group? Uh, in each group, there are three. I'm going vertically. We switched it up oh, on you. We, I changed it. I'm sorry. I'm messing you up. Blast off! Like how a many stars do we have? One in. How many are in group one here? There you go. Circle it. Can you see the purple? That's better. Hey, can you keep using purple? I see. No, 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 no. Go back to purple. How many stars are in group uh, one, Amon? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Uh, six. 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 So job. 18 divided by three equals six. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up a second. I got a question. Uh huh. What happens if group two and three have different numbers of stars? How do we know that there are six in those two groups? Oh, as that's well? a good point. Let's check. Ready? One, one two, two, three, three four, four, five, six. Okay, that's okay, the good. same. Okay, good. Ooh, I was scared. One, two, three, four, you look five, six. Okay, that's the same. You really so look it goes okay. in equally. So shaken. You know? Our answer is B. Aman, what can we do if 18 divided by three equals six? What can we do to check our answer? You can skip count by three. You can what? You can skip count by three. We could skip down by three, or we could just look at this question backwards and do the opposite of division and multiply and do six times three. Oh, wait, we could do it backwards. Wow. We could do the moonwalk. And that oh, equals wow. uh, 18. Right. I will not attempt it. No. Here's no. the moon right here. There you go. Oh. Oh. And he was up there the whole so. time. I'm looking at the man. Okay, Mon, so your answer is B6. <laughs> Sounds like Sorry. a battleship reference. B6. B6. Sound good? Oh, you got B me submarine. Green. Hey, guys. All right, Amon. Let's puck let's to pick a prize wall. Puck. Drop that puck. Drop that puck. Here we go. There it goes. Give what us something good. Hey, oh, it's it's a new prize. Flash drive. You know, USB flash drive. That's an awesome. You say USB. Awesome. Be happy to send that out. Yeah, USB. Awesome. Awesome. Usub. Cool. Yeah, that's an Usub flash drive. It's an drive. Yeah. You don't say USB. Jeez. I'm sorry. Usub. Don't embarrass Usub. yourself. Okay. I must be new here. You're both in contempt. Uh-oh, not again. Uh, you know, we use math in so many ways in life, not just in math class. Let's head out to the streets of the BCPS streets. to see who Maria is talking to now. Hi, Maria. Math on the street. Hola. Yo soy Maria, and I love math. Here at BCPS, we use math every day, everywhere, and in every office and school. Come with me, I'll show you how. Hola, yo soy Maria, and today I'm here with Patrick McCusker, the principal at Franklin High School. Tell me, how does a principal use math? Well, hello, Maria, and thank you for coming to Franklin High School. One way a principal uses math is in determining how many sections of every course to run. Oh, cool. Can you give me an example? Sure. Suppose we only want no more than 28 students in any class, mm -hmm. and we have 150 students register for U.S. history. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd have to figure out how many sections to run. So we would say, well, maybe we can run six sections. Well, 150 students divided by six sections would give us 25 students in a section. And that works because that's less than 28. But maybe we want to see if we can run just five sections. Well, then we would need to take 150 divided by five. Well, that would mean we'd have 30 students in each section, and that's more than we want. So then we know we need to run six sections of that course. Wow, that's a lot of students and a lot of math. So as you can see, math is important in running a high school. It sure is. Thanks for stopping by Franklin, Maria. Come back anytime. Gracias. Adios.
That was awesome. That was great, that was really right? Cool. That was I learned Maria. something. Did you guys learn something? Yeah, it oh, seems like more than a minute. Math is know? everywhere. That's good. That's good. I really math enjoyed it. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, you know, when Always. you're really doing math, time is just crazy. Hey, mm -hmm. by the way, did you notice we switched? Do you know what we did? Polly and I did your high five thing. Oh, you know really? how you guys high five? Yeah. How did it work out? We did high we did. wing. We ended up in different windows. <laughs> but she didn't have a Whoa. wing. Two so. wings. I don't have a wing. I have pants. You mm. high fived her all the way over there? No, we like switched. Like she flew out the window? In no. the hut. Switched. Goodness yeah. gracious. In their hideout, the Matho Mark hideout. <laughs> mm -hmm. You guys ready for another caller? I think we have one. You we seem do. totally fired up. Elmer, are you there? Hello? Hi, Elmer. Yes, I hear you. Is this Elmer Donovan's? from Hillcrest Elementary School? Mm-hmm. Elmer from Mr. Donovan's homeroom? Yes. Wow. Uh, okay. Elmer from... Yes, you know him. You're famous. Donovan. Jensie's there, too? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, maybe we'll drop the puck twice. That's Elmer, who, who's your math teacher? I forget. Miss Palmasano. Oh, Miss Palmazan is going to be so proud. Okay, what's your question? Okay, Samantha is training to run in, long, in a long-distance race. She runs one, one one-third miles every day for a week, which is seven days. How many miles does she run in one week? Awesome. Lots of running. I don't know if I got that number correct. Did you say that she runs that makes two of us. one third miles every day? One one-third. One and one third. I'm awesome. I'm okay. so glad I clarified. I heard mm -hmm. one third. One also. and Good one job. third miles every day for a week. Yeah. That's good exercise. That's and it, the right? question. Yeah, it is pretty good exercise. Mm -hmm. That's more than I exercise. Yeah, sure. I think Max runs. I that sit much. around a couple miles a day. <laughs> the only exercises do you I really do are you math exercises. Exercise? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I th I, th right. I work out of my mind. You know. <laughs> So this was only for one week. We need to find out how much he ran for a week or a month. Yeah. Okay, Elmer, what, what have you been doing, Ms. Palmazano? Have you been adding fractions, multiplying fractions? What, what sort of skills have you been working on? I've been multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions. Okay. Awesome. Because I was thinking of a lot of different ways we could do this one. I was thinking about maybe adding seven times, but quite honestly, if I'm going to add something by itself seven times, I can kind of skip ahead and use multiplication. So how many days are we running these one and one third miles? Because it says a week, but how many days are in a week? Seven. 81. Beautiful. Wait, no. wait, what? Is it what? seven or 81? I, I think seven. 81. Wait, did he say seven? Seven. Man, Man, Max week, did not tell right, me the truth. Max said 81. You can't always believe Max. You cannot He's trust silly. that guy. He's orange. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are fighting for no reason. It's seven. Seven. Hey, seven. is he talking about? Yeah, that's what you said, right? Whoa, split screen, hello. Seven days. Can I go over Ooh, here? Split screen. Whoa. Oh, no, I can't. So we're going to multiply. One. Whoa. I see it now. Wait, we're going to multiply one and one third with seven? OK. Nine, seven. Hello. Now, I'm not a really a big fan of using these mixed numbers like this. Can we convert one and one third into another number that kind of helps us multiply with other numbers? An improper fraction? Beautiful. Yeah, let's use an improper fraction. So okay, so we multiply the denominator by the whole number, then not the numerator. Right. So 3 times 1 plus 1 gives you what? 4. 4 over what? 4 over 3. Awesome. Sounds proper to me. And I'm going to go ahead and now multiply by that times 7. Do you ever use the improperty fraction? Is that a thing? Improperty? <laughs> I've never heard of that it. Is that a thing? You're acting in property. Do you yeah. say in property or improperly? <laughs> no, in property. Like, you know, I own some country property. Ali, you're going to get yourself held in content to court again, man. Ah! How many strikes Mango are we going to give you? Wait, 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 wait. Well, case closed. Elmer, what can yeah. I do Elmer's next? Elmer's ready to get back to work. I know, right. Elmer's studious. He's ready to, to work through this problem. Go, Elmer. Elmer, so what like, can I do with seven to help what me? What we do with the seven is, um, like, since it's a whole number and we don't have a denominator, we just add a one. Excellent. Well, we don't add one, right? Add Sorry. No. It's eight. Absolutely. That becomes a denominator. The one. Denominator, great. You can kind of see if you just say add one, that might communicate addition. Yeah. So we're very picky. At least I am. I'm picky. So we got four divided by three times seven divided by one, and good because dividing by one doesn't change its value. How am I going to multiply? Am I going to multiply four with seven, three, or one? No, you're going to multiply four times seven. Beautiful. So we're going to multiply across. Yeah. That's two 
That's, that goes you right have to the make numbers. a sound there effect. Can you make it? Oh, it didn't eight. work unless I did the sound, right? Right, right. You said it, Elmer. 28 over 3. Yeah. He, he's, well, he's flying away. Is he's 3 times by. 1 equal to 3? Um. I'm just messing with you. I wanted to see if you were confident. 3 times 1 definitely is 3. Do not mess with Elmer. He Absolutely. does not mess with you. <laughs> he's smart. Definitely. Yeah. So I run 28 thirds miles in a week. Great, that's easy to no, communicate. No, 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 no. You need to uh, make it into a mixed number. Great, great. Right. Can you help me with that? Okay. So we divide in long division three times three divided by 28. I heard long division, so I'm going to set it up like this. Whoa, look, it's over I there. I can also draw a picture if I would. I would like. Wait. It's also over there. Three uh -huh. goes into two. How many times? Uh, uh one. That means zero. Right, so we're going to have to look right to the, the what? What number? To the sky. Number 28. Yeah, so if we're going to divide 3 into 28 total, and long division didn't really help us this way, we're kind of just doing it directly. Maybe I will just draw a very quick picture here. I'm obsessed with drawing Please pictures. Please draw pictures. So i got 28 objects here. 28, 4, 5, Four, 6, 7, 8, eight 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 30, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 1, 2, 3. 30. Nine, nine, three times nine. You hear Ollie here messing seven. me up? He said 30, something like that. I, sorry, I thought I you said 72. Elmer, what did you say? Three times nine. Three Ooh. times nine gets us how many? 27. Right. So I can kind of find nine groups already in here by using that. So if I count out my nine groups, the idea here is that I would end up with one left over. You said 27, wow. I have 28. I would expect one to be left over. Yeah. Four, five. Wow, that's six, like Picasso. Seven. Eight. Uh-oh. Do you nine. guys know Picasso? And your mixed number would be nine one-thirds. Awesome. Nine and one-thirds. Nine, and one -thirds, nine total groups were created, and one remainder out of the three groups that we were trying to make it into. So 28 over three, nine total groups, one left over, group size was three. Awesome. But wait, what is it? Nine and a third what? Donuts? Cookies? No, Desks? it says miles. Miles! Yes, right. sir. Great mm -hmm. job, Elmer. I sit around that Super much. Super job. That's a lot of miles. That is. Wow. Lots of miles. But that's I'm a just week. as tired doing the problem as I would have been running nine and one-third miles. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I drove wow. nine and one-third miles. Hey, one yeah, but you know what? This. It's spread out over 81 days. True. Hey, I, that's right. true. When we, that, that's a fact. Right. I, what? Hmm? what time it's is time. it? It's time. What? It's time. Well, uh, it's about 5.20 uh, or something. It's time to drop a puck. No, it's time for something right. else. Before we take our puck. next caller. Oh, the no, no, yes, yes, that's right. A puck to pick up prize will all Here we go. Earbuds. Elmer. Earbuds coming at you, man. Okay. Congratulations. See you tomorrow. Okay. That would be the prize I would pick, I think, the earbuds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm partial to this flashlight. Hey, you guys know what? You put those in your ears. Do you know that? You put them in your ears. You have ears, bud. Ollie? It's a little known fact. No, I use nose buds. Let me get a pair of those. For they swimming? don't work as well. They kind of hurt, to be honest. <laughs> How well can you hear music through your nose buds, Ollie? I'm listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Before we take our next caller, uh, we're going to head out to one of our very own Baltimore County Public Schools to check in for a Mighty Math Minute. Hi, I'm Marn, and this is your Mighty Math Minute. Our problem today is 623 divided by 8. First, instead of trying to fit 8 into the whole number, we're going to divide it into chunks. First, you have to see if 8 can go into the first digit. 8 can't go into 6, so we have to go the second digit. 8 can't go into 62, and it can go in 7 times. 8 times 7 is 56, and you want to subtract that from the number you still have left to, to put 8 into. You can't subtract 6 from 2, so you have to regroup. You have 6 left, and six can't go into, 8 can't go into 6 anymore. So you have to bring down the next digit. Now you have 63. 8 can once again only go in 7 times. 
because if you want to put it in eight times, that's 64, and that's too many. Once again, we're going to subtract that from the total we still have left. Now we have seven left, but there's but there aren't any more numbers to bring down, and eight can't go into seven at all. This number here is your remainder. A remainder is a number that that um it's left over after a division problem. A remainder can be incorporated into your answer many different ways. One way is that the remainder adds one to your answer. Or sometimes the remainder is completely ignored and it doesn't change your answer at all. Or sometimes the remainder is the answer to the problem. For now, we're just going to leave it like this. And the answer is 77 with a remainder of seven. That was awesome. That was, mighty. That was very good. Very mighty. That hey, really, really quick, impressive. do you guys want to do that thing we were just talking about, the dance contest? Oh, you yeah, go ready? Yeah, yeah. Go. I'll be the judge. Ready? Okay. Set. Go. And go. Go. Whoa, okay, whoa, Mr. Whoa, Donna, whoa, your whoa, turn. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. I don't know your how to turn. do anything else. I can floss. Is that a dance move? Oh, no, don't do that. Oh. Wait, oh my goodness. Goodness. I can't Yowza. Watch. I can't Is this live? Watch I hope no one's watching. No, just floss, kidding. Watch. I hope everyone's Cover watching. I do have all of my eyes. students. Silly. Well, all of your students? What a day. This is such a day. This is a great day. Did you it have fun, day. Ollie? Huh? Oh, I always have fun. Ollie's Did you have fun? You know, Polly. fun fact. Oh, you know it. Thursday's no my favorite day of the week. No, it's mm -hmm. not Thursday. Huh? We it's learned all sorts of stuff today. What, tomorrow's not? No, tomorrow is. Wait, what? You're so silly. Oh, man. Wednesday's Ollie. my favorite day because we What's learn all sorts of things. We learned about um, teeth. We That's learned right. about the law. We learned that mm -hmm. Ollie is not a very, uh, he's huh? a very contempt. Wait, what? No, I don't know. Never mind. Huh? I just uh, realized something, actually. That problem with the teeth, we didn't even have to use the number 32 at all. It was the distractor number. Crazy. Well, kids, that's all the time we have for this week. So we want to thank you for tuning in. And mm -hmm. remember, we do re-air each episode, so be sure to watch. We look forward to seeing you next time. Only, Only here on, on BCBS TV. TV.